Good? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make these lovely flowers. Happy spring. Um, the things that you'll need for this are your paper petals, which are here. You'll need an orange Home Depot bucket. You'll need a two and a half quart container, your hyacinth dye, and then something to stir. So what you'll wanna to do to start out is put four of these containers with hot water into your Home Depot bucket. And then you'll wanna put eight capfuls of this dye into the bucket. And then you'll go ahead and you will stir the contents with the stir stick. Make sure that you're wearing gloves to protect your hands. You'll also wanna make sure to protect the surface that you're working on. So go ahead and grab a drop cloth. Um, a fabric one will work, plastic will work. If you don't have a drop cloth, go ahead and cut up cut apart a few plastic garbage bags. Okay. So now that you have your dye mixed, you can go ahead and grab your stack of flowers. You'll want to make sure that you dip these in their stacks. So what I have here isn't quite what you'll have. You'll have a little bit more than this. Um, but dipping them in the stacks will help to protect them from ripping because the paper gets saturated pretty quickly. And so what you'll do here is grab the stack and it, it can be pretty quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in here and then hang on to them at all times. Don't, don't let them go because then they're gonna be floating and pretty difficult to find. What I'm doing here is I'm separating them a little bit in my hands just to let some of the dye get into places that it wouldn't if I just dropped them in. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull them all out. You can see that the outsides are gonna take more dye pretty quickly. And so I'm gonna set this aside and then you'll set those down and you'll carefully peel these apart and then lay them flat on your, on your work surface. So you'll see there's different differences in the way that the dye took. So this one, obviously, since it was on the outside has more dye on it. Some of them will only get edges and that's okay. So I'll go ahead and lay all of these out. You'll repeat this step with your other sizes as well. So I'm going to go up to the next size, your medium petals. Again, I'm going to dip them in at first and then move them around a little bit between my hands to let the dye get in between all of the layers of them. So then I'll pull them all out together and again, just start to peel them apart. This is where you're going to want to be really careful so that there are weak points here on the corners. So when you go to pick them up, just make sure you're picking them up by multiple petals at one time. Okay, and then with your extra large petals, again, you're gonna wanna be really careful when you go to dip these. So this is gonna seem like it's not actually gonna fit in here, but you'll go ahead and just curl all of the petals. And then carefully dip this thing in. You don't wanna take a whole lot of time to do this. So really quickly move, move the petals apart in your hands, let some of the dye in there, and then very carefully pull the whole thing back out, making sure to hold all the petals if you can, and then dump out any excess dye. Again, that top is gonna to be the most saturated. You can see that it's less saturated underneath. And then you'll go ahead and lay these out on your surface as well. So when you're laying these out um, and you're lifting one off of the pile, what I found that works is if you lift up all of the petals and hold them in one hand and then lift the entire thing rather than just going and picking up a petal because that's when these run the risk of being ripped. Okay, so when you dip all of your petals, you'll see that at first you still have a lot of areas that are white and that's okay. So if you look here, you can see that there is a variation in color and then also a variation in saturation of color. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to achieve that over here. Okay, so now that all my petals are laying flat on my work surface, I'm going to take that two and a half quart bucket, dip it into the Home Depot bucket of dye, just to grab some pretty quickly. And then you'll go ahead and start to just dump some of this dye onto your petals. You can leave them as is, but you could also take your hand and spread the dye around a little bit. That'll also help to create some softness, but it is nice in some areas to keep that really saturated. As that sits, it will continue to dye. This is also going to help the front of your petal to feel a bit different from the back, and that's totally fine. When you go to lay these out, you'll also see that 
while this one, for example, is more saturated, the back is a lot lighter. You can pick whichever side you feel excited about. I'm gonna go ahead and put some dye on the back. I think the texture on this one is really pretty. And so then I'll just go around and do this to, oops, all of them. Move some of the dye around. Again, make sure that you have gloves on. And it is okay to have some that are lighter, so you don't need to add this to every single one. I'm gonna leave some of these kind of white. So while all of your flower petals dry, you can go ahead and get started on uh, adding some paint wash to your ivy leaves. So you'll grab your leaves. You'll want another two and a half quart container. This one I put 32 ounces of water in. You'll also grab your fresh artichoke paint, a paintbrush, and then another stir stick. So what I'm gonna do here is open this up and add a little bit of paint into this water. You want this mixture to be very washy. You don't want there to be a whole lot of texture to these leaves, but we do want them to be made out of a paint wash and not just straight paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump a little bit of this into the water. Doesn't need to be very precise. See how that is. Grab my stir stick and stir this. And I'm gonna grab one of the small leaves and then just see what that looks like. I'll grab my brush. Just give it an extra stir. Some of the paint is going to wanna settle at the bottom. Let's just see what that's looking like. I think it can use a little bit more paint, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a tiny bit more. And then again, I'll stir this. more to this and as you go you'll want to paint the front side go ahead and paint your back side and then you can flip it over to dry a little bit of texture that it might pick up from the drop cloth is okay um, but overall you want them to feel pretty solid in color so I'm gonna go ahead and, now that this paint is ready I'm gonna lay out the rest of these on my drop cloth and you'll repeat with all sizes You should have more leaves than this. This is just for demo purposes. Okay, so then this entire process should go pretty quickly. You don't wanna take a whole lot of time on this because the paint will start to dry and then it becomes very streaky. So with the small ones, this is pretty easy to achieve. You'll just zip over them pretty quickly. And then don't forget to also do the, so the, the back. So I'll flip that over really quick while I still have paint on my brush. And then I'm gonna flip it back over for even drying on the front. So you can see some areas here that are darker. Those had started to dry already. That's, that's okay. You just wanna try and avoid that too much on the front. It's also okay if some of these are darker than others. Some variation in color um, feels really nice in the composition. So then as you move up in size, it's gonna be more important that you move quickly so that the paintbrush strokes aren't super obvious on here. I'll go ahead and flip it. I'm actually gonna grab more paint for the second side. Pretty quickly. And I'll flip this over. 